Hello everyone, I'm Samuel French, and with my friend Juan Manuel Boca Chica, we're touring the nature reserve of Pionot, located in Sopo. So now we are walking down this place called the Royal Path, which is the first task that we must face before getting to the highest point of the mountain. Pionono, a magical place for kids and adults, is a life-changing experience due to the massive amount of nature present in this heaven-like mountain. A blessing in disguise for most of the touristy that visit Colombia from all over the world. Then we arrive to a place called the Hummingbird Garden. As its name says, this place is very well known for the hummingbird sighting. Hummingbirds are one of the smallest bird species that can be found in nature. They feed on the flower's nectar, also helping the process of pollination by distributing the pollen as they go from flower to flower. So now we are going to show you a clip of us in the Hummingbird Garden. So we are, we have been here around 10 minutes or less and we haven't seen any, any hummingbird. I think it's because due to the, to the winter season, because all the rain, the birds, the, they're hidden, I think, I suppose. But still, this place is beautiful, see, and we, and we are enjoying it. Truly, this is a very quiet place. You can hear everything, the nature moving around, the trees, the leaves falling down. And it is beautiful because this place, it's, how do you say, it's protected by, by the town, by Sopo. So they can't build over this natural reserve. And we hope that this place will still well, uh, how do you say it? Remain peaceful forever. Yes, remain peaceful for at least a long time, so the future generations can still visit this this beautiful, this such beautiful place. Now let's continue. After the hummingbird garden, we continue our journey to the top. As we keep walking, we start to realize the majesty of this place and all the virgin nature that it shelters. This is the camping zone and the barbecue zone. This is, in this place, you can camp. It has a cost, I think it's 24,000 pesos. And also you can do a barbecue, a, a delicious barbecue. But uh, it is uh, it's worth explaining that during, during, during summer, this place, uh, the, this park, the ecological park, prohibits and uh, doesn't allow people to uh, do barbecues or camp. Why? Because in summer, this place becomes, becomes kind of dry. So, if you, people turn out here, if they start a fire, the fire could easily spread and end up uh, burning, consuming half of this forest. And we don't want that. So uh, this is, I recommend highly this place to camp, it is very beautiful. If you don't like cold, like cold, like breeze, then don't come to here, but yeah. uh, regardless to that, the view, all this place is beautiful. And even uh, many people might think this, the, uh, that it's expensive, uh, 24,000 pesos for camping, uh, but it is worth it. And besides that it is worth it, uh, people uh, like the, the money, the money that it costs camping, it is used for maintaining this place, 
all this place, all this ecological park. And like for keeping it as it is, I like this beautiful place for the plants, like for guarding it. Uh, and we highly recommend it, yes, we both yeah. highly recommend it. It is such a beautiful place to do a barbecue, to spend the time with your family. In our way to the top, we found what it has to be the most iconic plant of this reserve. It's called Frailejon. This plant absorbs the water in the air and stores it for the paramount's benefit. Natural water reserve tanks, known as paramount monks, are extremely important to this biome. As a result, it is our labor to guarantee the protection of them. Now, we've been walking for some time from there. This place is called the Royal Path, and we have found this plant. Uh, it is called Frailejon. This plant is very common in, in this place, in this, in this, because this is a mountain. So, this plant is very important, oh, I almost fell, uh, for this environment because this plant is the, in charge of storing water, water. So, this place, Pionono, is crowded with different types of frailejones and their function is to store water. Uh, if you didn't know, this place, this type of environment is Paramo. And uh, the Paramos store almost 90% of the water here in Colombia. And Colombia has 80% of Paramos in the world. So these plants are very important for preserving water. So, as we said before, there you can see all the frailejones that are in this place. I can count one, two, three, four, almost ten frailejones in just these parts, including these ones, the, the small ones, but still, they're too much. This place, I never realized the amount of frailejones that are here, and that's why they say that in the Paramos, in, in the Paramos, yes, is where all the water is born from all these hydric resources. Whoa, I can imagine. Look, this place is wonderful. It's, it's, it's a paradise up in the sky. Yeah. As we can see, this place is full of these fairly honeys. As you can these plants that help the paramount to get water. There's also, uh, we also have to help to care about these plants because they're really important for this awesome nature. And finally, we arrive to the top. So, as you can see, right over there, there is the uh, cross of Pionano, it is called. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. If you can see it, well, then we were going to record it closer, as the, the closest we can. So, that is a cross made out of metal that has been built since a long time ago. And it was built by uh, supposed inhabitants. So, uh, there is a story behind that cross. Uh, down in Sopo, in the town, there is a place called a church called uh, the Lord of the Stone Sanctuary. So, uh, in this sanctuary, there lived a priest, a priest with his mate. So the priest was blind, uh, so he couldn't see. Uh, one day, the mate uh, went out to wash the priest's clothes, uh, and next to the next to the church, there was a 
uh, like um, a waterfall, uh, yeah, a small waterfall, and uh, where it was where she could wash the clothes. There, she was washing the clothes when, uh, in this in a stone, in a rock, she saw like a figure, a figure, a type of figure. She uh, went closer to see what it was, and she recognized it was like a figure of God. So she ran to the church and called the priest. And when the priest arrived, uh, remember he was blind, and uh, she told him to look to the stone, to the figure that was in the stone, in the rock. And when the priest looked, he recovered his sight. He wasn't blind uh, more. He wasn't blind anymore. And this was considered a miracle. So since then, the church received the name of the Lord of the Stone Sanctuary and inside the church there is the stone where supposedly there is the God's figure. Now in that church a Thursday long time ago the bells of the church were stolen or they disappeared and no one knew what happened. That night everyone start to hear, start hearing the sounds of the bolts, but they were, com they were coming from the cross, the place of the cross, and it was an unexplainable. Uh, people said how it was possible. So they start believing that under the cross there were there was a set of caves, uh, underground caves where the where the bolts were hidden. But this information was never proven. So uh, till today. No one knows what happens to the what happened to the church birth, to the church belts, and I guess it will still be a mystery. <laughs> As we were exploring the top of the mountain, we found this exotic plant, which turned out to be a carnivore plant. But I'll let my friend Juan Manuel talk about it. A beautiful plant, doesn't it? Well, the results that is a, carniv a carnival plant. This carnival plant used a sticky substance like glue to trap insects like mosquitoes. And it trapped them until they decompose so the plant can absorb its nutrients. Also, there are myths that uh, muiscas used this plant uh, with uh, the frelejones to make a type of glue and they put it all over the body and cover it with gold for doing that ceremonies. That's pretty interesting. Very good to know. Then we started our way back home. Now I think we're heading back home before it starts to rain. We're we're we have been lucky that it hasn't rained all over the day. Like today, today is grey, today is full of clouds, like it is about to rain, but it hasn't rained all over the day. And sadly, we didn't find uh, we didn't find those red mushrooms we were talking about earlier. And think like we're heading out into our homes, we can stop. We saw one at the entrance. Also, we didn't find any uh, how to say it? What are you trying to say? <laughs> oh, hummingbirds! A, hu a hummingbird. We didn't find a hummingbird, sadly. Yes, I think it is due to the season that it's raining, but still, this place is beautiful for coming at any yeah. time. Uh, it, it is opened all the all the year because this is a great incentive. Like it promotes ecotourism right here in this part of Cundinamarca in Sopo especially because when you first thought when you first come to Sopo the first thing you think is about uh, Alpina shack La Cabaña Alpina yeah and uh, that is only the, the only place and people don't know about these kind of places about Pionono about the Lord of the Stone Sanctuary and uh, we have to we have to promote these type of places because they're beautiful and besides we can, as we said before, educate people. Oh, look, we hadn't passed through this part before. Uh, 
Oh yes, I think that is. Well, this is the yeah. This is the start in, when we the path, the mysterious path we were walking by earlier. And here there is yep this marvelous bed of pine leaves. Yeah, I think I'm going to rest here a little. Uh, yeah, pretty soft, pretty like it has tons of layers of pine leaves and it feels like a soft carpet, like a soft bed. Uh, earlier we found a couple here, they were resting. I think we <laughs> we annoyed them, but it yeah, wasn't our maybe. it wasn't our intention, so oh we're going to stay here for a little minutes, a few yeah. couple minutes more, and then we're going to head back to the to the entrance before this place closes closes or it starts to rain because uh, it is it seems that it's going to rain. Maybe yeah. we're going to go to the uh, Alpine Alpines shack and eat uh, miloja. Oh, the delicious miloja that they make here. Uh, oh, we may probably dessert. May, we, we may probably record it. We're sponsoring Alpina, <laughs> but yeah. still. So see you like in a couple. I think in three, two, one. See you. It was a life-changing experience, and we learned a lot of this place. But wait, there's more. We had the luck of finding this red mushroom called Amanita muscaria which only appears during winter. After making a deep research, we found out that if this fungus is eaten in great amounts, it can have neurotoxic effect. The story says that Vikings, especially berserkers, used to eat this fungus before battle, so they could get an hallucinogen effect which included superhuman strength. So, without further ado, thank you everyone for watching, we hope you enjoy it and learned about this magnificent place and that protecting these places is really important because the future of humanity depends on these places and how well we take care of them.